Welcome back everyone, Russ Barkley here again. And today in this commentary, I wanna focus on one of the most widespread claims about positive benefits related to ADHD, particularly in adults. And this is a claim that ADHD is associated with hyperfocusing and presenting that as if that was automatically assumed to be a widespread benefit across all people with ADHD and across uh, much of their life when they are attempting to focus on activities, particularly interesting ones. So let, let's do a deeper dive into this issue because uh, A, it's widespread as a claim. B, there is very little empirical evidence in the journals one way or the other about hyperfocusing and ADHD. We're going to take a look at some of those papers to see what those findings are about. Um, C, hyperfocusing is very difficult to study in the lab using measures from cognitive psychology and so on because it's believed that it is something that the individual enters into on their own accord but very difficult to simply trigger it automatically using lab-based tasks. Uh, in part, this may also have to do with the fact that it's frequently described in conjunction with tasks that are very interesting and rewarding to the individual. So uh, let's understand that we're dealing with something here that's not really well-defined, pretty amorphous, uh, for which there's a little research, but not an awful lot, uh, and where there is widespread claims to the contrary, that this is a slam dunk benefit linked to ADHD specifically. So uh, let's take a look at what's out there. And I'm gonna show you the research rather than just summarize all of this for you in some sort of easy thumbnail PowerPoint slide, uh, because I don't want to be accused of uh, cherry picking the literature for the sake of proving a point one way or the other. That's what journalists do these days. And as a result, they're more akin to propagandists than to people who are engaged in inquiry and scholarship. We wanna know what the status of the evidence base is. Um, so let's, let's take a look here, because if you use Google Scholar to search the journals for articles, uh, you're gonna find less than 10 that are linked to ADHD specifically. Um, there are others that are commentaries, but they're not evidence-based uh, inquiries into this topic. So uh, let's take a look. First, of all, I wanna start with what's out there in the trade media because it's out there a lot. Uh, and this is uh, an article at Attitude Magazine, attitude.com, uh, about hyperfocusing and this phenomenon of intense fixation of attention believed to be associated specifically with ADHD. And as you can see here, they're defining this as an intense focus of attention over a sustained period of time uh, toward a particular activity, and one in which, as you see down here, the individual is often less or unaware of events taking place around them, uh, often loses track of time as well, and experiences the activity uh, intensely, uh, almost absorbed into the activity. So it refers to an intense fixation, often in an interesting activity for an extended period of, of time. Uh, and this article, very nicely, goes on to talk about hyperfocusing and the brain, uh, goes on to talk about uh, which I find commendable, is ADHD hyperfocusing a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, and that's worth considering because you can become intensely absorbed in a very rewarding activity to the exclusion of the environment, but there are other things in that environment to which you should be attending. Are you going to miss the school bus because you're absorbed in a video game? Are you going to uh, ignore the rest of your family because you are self-absorbed in uh, something you find interesting on the internet, maybe even pornography for that matter? So uh, it's, and by the way, that's not just a, uh, an invention. There are uh, a few articles on the link between uh, ADHD uh, and an intense use of pornographic material. It's usually done somewhere else in the world than the US, uh, but there's a little bit of information out there suggesting that that might be the case. But we're not gonna deal with that right now. I mean, that's, that's debatable. But the point is, is it good or bad? Well, it depends. 
focused on the activity that you're absorbed in, what else you're supposed to be doing with that time, and does it contribute constructively or not, or destructively to your current and longer term welfare. Uh, and as we see here in these interviews with some experts, um, it can go both ways. I mean, this could be a trait that is a liability that if left unchecked, as it says here in the article, it can lead to failure in school, lost productivity, strained relationships with family and friends, and on and on. Uh, on the other hand, if it is targeted at more constructive, self-affirming, and adaptive activities that are better for your welfare, uh, then good for you. Uh, maybe this results in a state of hyper productivity, uh, particularly if you're at work and you're an entrepreneur and you find a particular aspect of the job very self-absorbing and interesting, uh, then it may be something that's good to deploy in that aspect. Though, as we will see, hyper focusing doesn't seem to be something that uh, one controls volitionally, that one can dedicate to whatever one wants to do across all kinds of tasks, whether they're boring or interesting or not. It seems to be specifically used around instances of activities that are highly engaging, interesting, uh, rewarding to the individual, and is far less likely to occur when there are tasks that are boring, unrewarding, uh, uninteresting, but let's not forget that much of life falls under the latter description. So have a look if you want to start with at the attitude.com website article. Again, all articles I cite here are linked in the thumbnail sketch for this video, uh, and that should get you started into the literature. Now, let's actually go into the scientific literature and see what's in there rather than the trade literature, which is based mainly on comments the opinion of the journalist uh, or interviews with a few uh, ADHD experts. This is a really nice introductory scientific paper I found on the concept of hyperfocus, its relationship to other aspects of attention. And then it goes in to look at the literature as of its publication date, 2019, uh, and uh, to what extent this phenomena actually has been demonstrated in people with particular disorders. So it like attitude refers to hyperfocus as a phenomenon in which one is completely absorbed in a task to the point where the person is uh, tuning out or ignores the surrounding environment and other things taking place. And it's most often mentioned, by the way, in terms of psychopathology in the context of disorders like autism spectrum disorder, schizophrenia, and of course, ADHD. And this review goes into the term and the evidence. Uh, and I like that because it shows that the term itself, as it says here, is very broadly defined, uh, anecdotally speaking, uh, often a phenomena that reflects absorption in a task to the point of completely ignoring or tuning out everything else, but then goes on to point out that, okay, well, well that's great, but how does that overlap with being in the zone, another concept, or with flow? Uh, which has also been described as this intense immersion into an activity to the exclusion of other things. Uh, and so as you read down this article, uh, there are some very interesting parts to the article. I found the tables particularly informative. First of all, there's a table that describes hyperfocus from the ADHD, autism, and schizophrenia literature and says that there are four aspects to defining hyperfocus. One, it's characterized by an intense state of concentration and focus. Two, uh, when engaged in hyperfocus, unrelated external stimuli do not appear to be perceived, or if they are perceived, one is suppressing responding to them, one's simply either not perceiving them and certainly not reacting to them. To engage in hyperfocus, the task has to be fun or interesting, which means it's not going to be something that we deploy with ordinary tasks that we still need to get done, like housework and balancing our checkbook and dealing with our children and making it to various appointments and dealing with the scut work of our jobs. Uh, one's unlikely to find hyperfocus being used in much of life, which is much of life that is boring. And then finally, during a hyperfocused state, task performance improves. As we're going to see, that's kind of debatable because it's very hard to objectively measure task performance before and after people go 
uh, from ordinary states of attention into states of hyperfocusing. So very good article at getting to the nuts and bolts of what do we mean by hyperfocus. It then goes on to talk about the substantial overlap between the definition of hyperfocus and the concept of flow in the field of positive psychology. Uh, and you see here the definition of flow. I'm not going to go into it. You can read the article, but it pretty much crosswalks over onto the characteristics of hyperfocusing. So as the authors imply here, uh, one seems to be synonymous with the other for the, the most part. Intense focus and concentration, uh, uh, emerging action and awareness so that you're interacting and there's a lot of feedback going on, a loss of reflective self-consciousness, a distortion of your sense of time, uh, a suppression of awareness of what is going on around the individual and usually being done in something that the individual finds intrinsically rewarding. So you can see why uh, the terms are not only similar, they may well be synonymous. And then they go to point out what they think of are the four critical aspects of the term hyperfocusing. And we've already talked about what those might be, so we're, we're going to scroll down from there. So then we get into the part of the review that deals with uh, ADHD specifically. Uh, and believe it or not, by 2019, the, the authors of this review said they could only find one science paper on this topic, despite the fact, by the way, that the term hyperfocus has been around for uh, almost 20 years before this review was written. Uh, the term is used in trade books on adult ADHD back into the 1990s, uh, such as books by Ned Hallowell, my friend, uh, and John Rady, uh, and others in which they talk about certain benefits of ADHD, hyperfocus being among them. Uh, we also see it in later books uh, that have to do with uh, ADHD in adults by other authors. Uh, and then some people almost reaffirming this as uh, the gift that ADHD gives to individuals. So uh, a great deal of hyperbole back in the trade literature back oh, 20, 25 years ago when adult ADHD first came onto the scene in terms of the public's awareness about it. Uh, but almost no research back then to support those kinds of claims. So one study here, it did find that there was some association uh, between uh, ADHD uh, and hyperfocusing uh, in that study. So uh, sort of a positive finding. Uh, the problem with the particular study they talk about is that it didn't use clinically diagnosed individuals as much as it identified individuals who had high symptoms of ADHD. And as you've seen in my previous commentaries on intelligence, on creativity, on being an entrepreneur, boy, do we get different results when we measure ADHD on a rating scale and just look at people who have elevated symptoms but don't meet the clinical diagnostic criteria for the disorder versus people that are seen through clinics who are being impaired by the disorder, who do meet all diagnostic criteria, and therefore clearly have a disorder rather than just a set of symptoms to a degree that's a little greater than the population. That distinction is going to be very important, not just in this field, but across many other findings about ADHD. So this is a very nice review in the journal. Uh, I'll show it again, Frontier, excuse me, Psychological Research. Uh, and discussing hyperfocusing and attention. So great, a good place to start besides the trade literature and talks about what does this term really mean and what does it overlap with, but is there evidence for it in ADHD? Eh, at that time, maybe one study. So let's move on.